Dear student, Assalamu alaikum and welcome to online classes of routine engineering. I am Dr. Mehmet Khan, Assistant Professor, Department of Biotechnology and Genetic Engineering. In our previous lecture, we studied about different types of mutations and their effect on amino acid sequence of protein. In today's lecture, we will study about oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis with M13 virus. In protein engineering, we can apply different methods of directed mutagenesis in order to acquire desired characteristics in protein of interest. As you can see here, the title of some methods that can be applied to modified amino acid sequence by changing their respective codon at DNA level. Modified DNA are transcribed with alter codon, which are translated by ribosome to incorporate our desired amino acids. Later, we can test different properties of the new protein that is modified at amino acid level. Among these different strategies that are used to modify protein, in today's lecture we will study about oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis with M13 DNA as a template. And rest of the procedures will be discussed in our consecutive classes. Here question arises what is oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis when using M13 as a template DNA. Before going to explain M13 DNA mediated oligonucleotide directed mutagenesis, we should know about what is mutagenesis and how it is issued and what is M13 DNA. Basically, mutagenesis is a process by which genetic information of an organism is changed. DNA of any organism have specific sequences that are widely present in the nature. However, these natural sequences may be changed that result into abnormal sequence and in turn into abnormal mRNA and polypeptide in case of protein coding genes. Those agents that modify DNA are divided into two groups, endogenous and exogenous. And endogenous DNA damage DNA sequence can be modified naturally when there is some disturbance in internal cellular mechanism. For example, DNA can be modified during replication by polymerase enzyme to incorporate wrong nucleotide or maybe due to unequal crossing or due, uh, during recombination process. Sometimes nitrogen bases in the DNA become deaminated or depurinated that result into RAN base pair and double stranded DNA. Reactive oxygen species that are produced as a byproduct can change DNA normal sequence. All these processes occur within the cell of an organism. In case of exogenous DNA damage, different types of exogenous agents have been discovered that modify DNA either specifically are not specifically where DNA is exposed to this agent. These agents are divided into two major groups, chemical and physical agents. Chemical agents may be natural chemical such as aflatoxin that are present in the foods or may be man-made chemical such as nitrogen mustard. Nitrogen mustard was used as a chemical weapon and First World War I. Another example of man-made chemical that involved in DNA modification is benzopyrin. 
फिर जो पायरी एज पार्टिकुलरली प्रेजेंट एंड स्पोक ऑफ सम सब्सटेंसेस सच एज कोल व्हीकल एंड सिगरेट्स इन एडिशन टू केमिकल डीएनए डैमेजिंग एजेंट डीएनए कैन आल्सो बी मॉडिफाइड बाय अप्लाइंग सम फिजिकल एजेंट फॉर एग्जांपल यूवी लाइट दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन सनलाइट are ionizing radiations ionizing radiation may be natural such as natural gases like radon gases or may be man made such as x rays or some nuclear test in protein engineering we also use some exogenous sources to modify dna in order to you to achieve protein with new desired properties early people used exogenous sources such as radiation or chemical to modify dna however it is noted that these mutation generates mutation but these mutation are non specific and may be non reproducible some people used nucleotide analogs such as aminopurine to modify dna aminopurine basically is a purine analog which can either pair with guanine or cytosine that result in transfer wrong base pair information in the replication of dna during cell cycle as you can see here in this table fragment of dna with normal base pair and abnormal base pair for your understanding a is highlighted green and normal version of dna fragment so in the absence of a nucleotide in the log dna is replicated normally but when a normal dna fragment adenine is replaced by aminopurine here represented by a and red block during replication this aminopurine can either pair with guanine or cytosine that result transition mutation by replacing at base pair with gc base pair and dna molecules we have already discussed transition mutation in our previous lecture similarly another nucleotide in the log n4 hydroxycytidine was used in later 1940 in the lab of charles weismann incorporation of n4 hydroxycytidine successfully made transition mutation by changing gc base pair A to A T. As you can see here, a short sequence of DNA that is A G C T T. In this sequence, normal cytosine is changed into N four hydroxycytidine. When this modified sequence of DNA is replicated, the new synthesized strand of DNA come with A instead of G. in the next replication phase the new synthesized strand of t c a a a will be a g t t t here g c is completely replaced with a t i hope you have now some idea about how to modify dna using some suitable mutagen now come to the question that i ask at the beginning of today lecture that was what is m13 m13 is a filamentous bacteriophage which infect e coli bacteria the m13 genome has the following characteristics it has circular single stranded dna as you can see here with 6.4 kilo bases The genome of M13 code for a total of 10 genes 
these genes are denoted by Roman numerical digit 1 up to 10. Like other protein coated viruses, M13 genome is also encapsulated by protein codes. You can see here M13 phage genome is a single stranded DNA molecule in red color in this figure. Protein code is made of two different types of proteins. These proteins are encoded by two different genes. The gene 8 proteins, which is known as major structure protein, form a symmetrical array of approximately 2700 identical subunit that surrounding the viral genome and approximately 5 to 8 copies of the gene 3 proteins that are known as minor coat proteins are located at the end of the filamentous phage. These minor coat proteins allow binding to bacterial 6 plus during infection. As I told you that minor coat proteins help M13 viruses to attach to 6 pillars of E. coli during infection. After binding to 6 pillars, M13 viruses inject their genomic DNA into host bacteria. Major coat proteins are stripped off on the surface of E. coli while minor coat protein remains attached. As the genomic circular st single stranded DNA molecule enters into the cytoplasmic region of host cell, host replicative machinery converts single stranded positive DNA strand into double stranded circular DNA. This molecule is known as replicative form or simply RF. Amplification of viral genome. How M13 genome is amplified in host cell? After inserting single stranded circular DNA into host cell, replicative machinery of host cell convert it into double stranded molecule that is known as replicative form RRF. Gene 2 protein of M13 virus introduces neck and positive strand and DNA polymerase one extend the other strand. After one trip around the genome, the gene 2 protein again make to release a completed linear positive genome. Linear positive genome is circularized. During first 15 to 20 minutes of DNA replication, the progeny positive strands are converted into double stranded replicative form. In the meantime, Gene 5 protein is synthesized. Gene 5 protein is a single stranded DNA binding protein and prevents conversion of single stranded positive genome to the replicative form. So further replication of M13 genome stopped at this stage. Phage packaging after nicking by gene 2 proteins to convert replicative forms into single stranded DNA, gene 5 proteins are bound with single stranded DNA molecule and carry DNA molecule toward plasma membrane of the host cell. At this stage, major coat protein present an E. coli membrane. Here, gene 5 proteins are stripped off and the major coat protein cover phage DNA as it is extruded out. Length of the filamentous phage is determined by the size of the DNA because in an experiment approximately 42 kilobases insert have been introduced into M13 genome and packaged which was 7 times more than M13 genome size. Before leaving host cell surface approximately 8 copies of the gene 3 proteins are attached at the end of the extruded genome. Now 
the viral particle is ready to infect another host cell. So, infecting host cell and multiplying its own genome by using host cell replicative machinery, this property make M13 as a suitable molecule to use as a cloning vector. But we should know about what is cloning vector. Actually, a small piece of DNA that can be stably maintained in an organism and into which a foreign DNA fragment can be inserted for cloning purpose this type of molecule is known as cloning vector. Number of plasmid of bacteria and yeast as well as viral genomes are used as a cloning vectors. M13 genome has also been developed to use as a cloning vector by inserting the following elements. Lake repressor gene that is Lake I operator region of the Lake Z gene and a pulley linker site that is, that is used to insert gene of interest for cloning purpose. Now we have some basic knowledge of M13 as a cloning vector. We can use this as a cloning vector to clone the inserted gene with specific mutation. How is it possible to mutate the inserted gene in M13 single stranded DNA? We can perform by few steps, for example, insertion of gene of interest which we want to mutate using single stranded DNA of M13 as a template, then replication of other strand to convert it into double stranded DNA using mutated oligonucleotide prim primer and clinofragment as polymerase enzyme then ligation of second strand with T4 DNA ligase enzyme and transformation to specific host cell now in host we have two type of cloning vector after amplification one can amplify and express normal version of gene of interest while other one with desired mutation. So we have each one with 50% chance. From this strategy, using M13 as a cloning vector, we can mutate one copy of gene of interest. So during amplification, we will face both normal gene product and desired mutated gene product. Both will be in mixture with approximately 50% ratio each one. So how to enrich the cloning vector with desired mutation we will study in next lecture. For further and detailed study please consult chapter 8 of molecular biotechnology book and inbox me your question to answer you via email and or TCMS. Thanks for watching my lecture. Today lecture is on the basis of following literature that include books and web pages. You can consult these books and or browse these web pages to find details of today lecture. Detailed search will help you to solve your confusion and enhance your level further. Once again, thank you very much for watching my online lecture. Assalamu alaikum.